due to time constraints. I watched Dinazenon first. I wasn't very moved by it and forgot about it. Recently, I was turned to Gridman and gave it a watch. The more I watched Gridman, the more I came to dislike Dinazenon. Gridman has much better writing in my opinion in its mystery storytelling. Dino Zenon left too many parts of its story too vague and unclear. The fights are much better animated in Grimman, though not very interesting at times. I enjoy the stories of Akane, Anti, and Rika. That itself is a problem with Grimman, because many of the characters don't really go anywhere besides their episodic gimmicks. So many of the characters that I wanted to see grow and develop were left mediocre and plain, and reduced to gags. Akane is at least a strong antagonist, whereas Dino Zenon's antagonists fall like a boring joke. Music-wise, Grimman has some great tracks from Sagisu, who many know from Evangelion, Karikano, and Bleach, among others. This leads to another problem with Dino Zenon. It copied too much from Gridman, except a good ending, and yet took some of the characters from there and used them in a way that felt like nonsense. Dino Zenon aside, Grimman felt significantly better. With Grimman, I can have fun in theorizing about what is happening, because it's written in a clever and non-convoluted way. Other anime, such as Summertime Rendering or a Vivi Florid Eye Song, have such a ridiculously nonsensical plot, I may still be able to enjoy it somewhat, though I can no longer take it seriously. Animation-wise, Grimman has some great fights, when the staff decide to try better. Outside of the fights, the animation doesn't really do much, though they did well with good character designs, such as with Rika. Despite this, I am not moved by an anime just because it has cute, attractive girls. That would be cheap of me. Grimman has much more to offer to warrant those. It's clear that there is a specific episode in this series that stands out from not just the series, but from anime in general. It's where the main cast find resolve and wake up from their dreamlike state, because they realized it was all fake and that they must face the real world, even if it's not the ideal, and to keep their obligations to the Grimman Alliance. It ties down to Akane, who feels like the central focus of the series, and surprisingly so, as she is also one of the main antagonists. From what I can understand, if I can call it that, the world of Grimman has been taken over by an alien. Another one known as Grimman himself has been chasing this alien to try and stop it. The first episode shows that the fight has already started, and Grimman gets defeated and shattered into different consciousness that spread into the city. One lands inside Utah. Interestingly enough, the series never shows the real Utah, besides some romantic feelings that somewhat influence his new host. Grimman being in Utah the entire time and slowly waking up felt like a great way to write a protagonist. Maybe we don't know who Utah really is, though Grimman taking full control of Utah at least makes him a solid and courageous protagonist. I'm tired of pathetic, lowly, coward protagonists who are too morally blinded to fight a war and kill. Protagonists who are annoyingly and insufferably awkward, insecure, and undecisive. I'm tired of that. I don't want to hear that they get better, because that's besides my point. There should be more Yewoki Joes, more Kenshiros, more Obersteins, more Oscars. I'm not saying copies, though you get the point, I'd hope. It's been a long battle that reaches somewhat of a conclusion here in Gridman. Akane is a god who built a city that she thinks can become her ideal world. Despite this, her weak and destructive mental state has brought her insanity as she can never be satisfied with what she does. Her perfect world can't be achieved, partly because nothing is perfect. Everyone becomes her victim as she is able to create and destroy whatever and whomever she wants. Unbeknownst to her, she is merely being used to fight Grimman. The main cast join the Hyper Agents and attempt to save the city from Akane's destructive hobby and from herself. Though she is in full control of her city, outside elements from other worlds have surfaced to control and challenge her. Lately, I've been feeling connections more with broken characters, characters that live tragic lives and painfully try to get better or failed in the process. I think it's because I've hit so many low points in my own life that that is why I'm able to relate to them so well now. Characters such as Cheryl from Adion, Moeka from Steins Gate, Sayaka from Madoka Magica, Fei from Kabe Bebop, Hibuki Joe from Asha no Jo, Misato from Evangelion, and now Akane from Gridman. I look at Rika, who try to see the best in Akane. I can't think like her. If I have to take out my friend who's become an enemy, I'm taking them out. Naivete kills, though I can understand this is a different context. I see Sho, who fought useless as he was in Gridman, though he was the glue of, of the Gridman Alliance that inspired to keep them together. What's important for him to realize is that everyone has a role to play, some more flashier than others, but still necessary and still important. As for Akane, you would think that a god could create an ideal world, and yet she can't. 
I don't blame her. Even our God can create a perfect world. We are made to suffer. And I don't want to hear about justifying living a hell on earth by saying to wait it out until heaven because our lives matter here too. Too many times religion has been used like that as a tool for enslavement as shown throughout history. How can I accept religion when it has been used as a tool of oppression more than salvation? In Akane's case, it's also ironic that a character that feels lonely makes herself so unapproachable as she was described to be by the main cast. I would hope that Akane found peace in her new world. I would hope that she'll be able to overcome her manipulative and violent ways. Her pettiness is amusing to see. From getting mad someone bumped into her, to someone accidentally hitting her food with a ball, to her getting frustrated in, in herself for leaving dirty footprints at home. I would hope that she was able to overcome as many flaws of herself as she could and to become a better person. Not just her, I have to wake up too. I can't use anime as a form of escapism. I can't forget about reality and those things that matter more. For some people, anime is a dream that traps them inside. If not careful, it can become the unhealthy obsession. Thank you for watching.